first of all, I'm gonna have a new approach for videos. Instead of only doing one type of content, I wanna make both scripted and unscripted content. And by scripted, what I mean is pretty much what I've been posting for the past year. It takes a long time to put that stuff out. Uh, there's so much writing involved, uh, lots of editing, all of that. I'm not gonna stop doing that. I, I love doing it way too much. But what I realized is that I think I can definitely do both. Uh, and this is what that's gonna be. Uh, generally just videos where I kind of just speak out into something and just say what I feel about you know, a certain topic. And so I'll be separating these two types of videos. Anything that remains with the Stone Cold Miracle tag on my videos, those are going to be the really highly edited stuff. That's going to be the special category of videos that I make. Anything without it, that's just going to be me. That's just going to be me making videos like these. These are not Stone Cold Miracles. Stone Cold Miracles are special. Generally just going to be for things that I think don't really deserve a bunch of editing, a bunch of bravado. But like I said, I'm going to do both and try to figure out as I go along. Uh, this is my first time doing something like this. So I'm probably going to ramble a bit. Now that that's out of the way, preservation, what a joke, right? Overwatch 1 has been effectively wiped from everyone's hard drives. You can't play the old game, you aren't allowed to think about it, and then sending people in to just completely destroy anyone who has recordings of it. It's a really shitty situation. Anyone who likes that game is being forced into a position, and that position basically gives you two choices, stay or leave. It's one thing to, I guess, update a certain character or do something else, but they're going to be removing the entire game. They're going to be removing the entire way the game is played. Anyone who's played both at this point and has played a lot of Overwatch to be able to tell the difference and can see that it's it's very different. Not necessarily in a good or bad way, but this kind of president just isn't fair. And I have a lot of memories playing this game, so that's kind of part of why this whole thing is such a massive deal. My earliest memories playing the game were the first beer. I hated it back then. I, I didn't really like Overwatch when I first played it. There was just something about the gameplay that just didn't click with me. And I didn't really give it a chance after that for uh, more than a few months. Or so. I distinctly remember playing me and just thinking to myself, this isn't really very fun. Why am I still doing this? But I downloaded the beta mainly because my friends wanted to play it with me and because it was the big thing around then. I think it was around 40 to 15 back then. And so the beta ended and I just stopped caring about it as you do. But around September, they initiated this thing called a free weekend, allowing you to play the game for completely for free. It was sometime around September. I didn't play with anyone. I saw it on the shop and I thought to myself, you know what, people really like this game. I'm gonna give on the chance you know why not i just loved it i was so into what was going on um i don't know what exactly clicked between those six months but playing overwatch one's um free weekend it just really gripped me i just loved playing it and for about for all three days of those i was almost entirely just playing overwatch and i was really surprised at how much fun i was having uh, I, I, have this, I i i remember very much remember playing tracer on the uh, temple of anubis and just having a blast you know it, nothing was really like it back then so i was just zipping around using the rewind and it, it was just so much fun so much fun like comparatively going back to the other games it felt cheap by comparison in a sea of games like Titanfall 2 and whatnot, it just really stood out. Overwatch was a very special game compared to everything else that was coming out with very gritty and realistic um, graphics. And that's not that's not a bad thing. I'm not dissing those games. Trust me, I love Doom, which was came out around the same time. I love Titanfall 2. I love all those other games, but comparatively. Nothing really compared back then, so I finished the free weekend, I stopped playing for a few months, obviously. Uh, but the game was on my mind, and I was really interested in seeing, do I really want this? Should I really spend this money? Because, you know, as a kid, you don't get that much money. You don't have that much money for games, and what money you do have on games, you spend it on infinite warfare like an idiot. Yeah, back in 2016, I was super into Black Ops 3, and 
I bought Infinite Warfare's Legacy Edition thinking, hey, I like Call of Duty. This is gonna be good. I'm not worried about this at all. I should have worried. It was looking back on it. I don't hate Infinite Warfare at all. If anything, it's one of the last truly innovative COD games, but I was still very, very disappointed back then. For £90, that's how much it was over here for both the remaster and Infinity Warfare. Um, Infinite Warfare. It was not worth it. And I think around November, I just thought to myself, man, Overwatch was really fun. So I bought the game through the British Star game. It's a really creative name. And I just, I got it. I came home from school one day, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I saw the package, it was in. I opened it up, I saw this little Widowmaker sticker on it, and it was just... I just remember being so excited. I, I hadn't been excited for a game like that. Well, no, that's not true, I was a kid. Uh, I was gonna say that I hadn't been excited for a game like that in ages. No, that's not true. I, I was excited for many games. But with Overwatch, I was like... I think I was shaking. That's how much I really wanted to play it uh, back then. And, you know, I, I put it in. Into my PS4, which is one of you know my main console back then, that's where I play the beer too. I put it in and I just like I thought I cracked it. Like I thought I had a blast. It was so fun. I, I still remember how fun it was, and I just remember thinking to myself, holy I wanna play this all the time. Because the thing the thing about Overwatch was it wasn't just a game that was fun or famous because of the hype, because it was popular. It was fun because it was a legitimately innovative game that did so many things different from the modern first person shooter. And I wanna bring up Team Fortress 2. I love Team Fortress 2. I think it's great. But when I played the beta, I was so saying, oh, this is a Team Fortress 2 ripoff. It's just taking from it. Oh, that's Team Fortress 2 because I had played Team Fortress 2 for years before I really got into Overwatch. But even that game, when you directly compare it to Overwatch, it's completely different. Overwatch just had so much to it. No, I don't mean so much more to it than Team Fortress 2, no. What I mean is, um, I'm not sure what I mean. No, what I mean is that switching a character in Overwatch, I guess the best comparison would be to say that it was like you were switching to a different game. The differences of playing Reinhardt and fighting an Ana, and playing Reinhardt and fighting a, I guess, Diva. It just, no character interaction was the same because of how these abilities affected gameplay. How much it affected encounter by encounter. No two characters were the same is what I'm trying to say. You know, you just pick McCree, you know, kind of standard guy with a revolver. But when you would really look into his abilities, McCree was such a vile character for stopping characters who were really fast. You wouldn't really pick Tracer to go up against a ball. It wouldn't be as efficient as picking a McCree. Oh hey, you don't want to play McCree? Alright, you want to stop him a different way. Go Torbjorn, you know, put down a turret. Oh, you don't want to play Torbjorn? Alright. Switch to someone else, I guess. Uh, how would you pick Symmetra? Put a turret down in a very specific way. You need to be smart with how you place it. And I guess because you have that teleport, you can be a bit more useful. You know, because you're Symmetra, you wouldn't be able to do that as McCree. You just wouldn't be able to provide that utility. That's kind of what I mean. Everyone was so different. And it wasn't like just swapping out a gun. Everyone felt different. The sound design of the game was so unique. Anyone you played, everyone had different footsteps. Everyone grunted differently, you know? The game did so much to make you feel fully immersed in these characters that it just made them feel that much more substantial. It was such a blast to just experiment and play different characters. If I was failing as Genji, who might I add, was one of the main reasons I even fell in love with again. He is just cool, come on, he, he is so cool. Even if I was losing, it didn't really matter because it, just hitting people was fun. The gun mechanics were so good. Landing and hit on someone or just doing anything felt like a complete joy. You would just dance around as Tracer and hear the little gunshots and it was just so... It was addicting is what it was. It had a really solid gameplay loop where, sure, you're not very good at that one character. Just try someone else, maybe see what you're gonna do as them. In a way, Overwatch was like the Smash Bros of shooting games. How different it was to deal with enemies was close to how different Smash as a fighting game was to Tekken or Street Fighter. It was just so refreshing to see a game that looked like Overwatch 2, um, not even considering the gameplay. With how stylized and cartoony it was, how alive every character was, you know, from the way they wield their gun. Like, I'll give you an example. When Roadhog is walking, you could see his flimsily made gun just bouncing 
bouncing around, you know, little pieces of scrap falling. It was those details that had so much attention put on them that, like I said before, made the game feel even more immersive. You know, just the way that every character would say hello, the way every character would just look. Everyone had a very defined silhouette and it was immediately recognisable who you were fighting against, who you were with. Tons of likeable personalities. I can't express how much Overwatch's art style made it just such an appealing game, such an attractive game compared to everything else that was coming out, especially in 2016. Like I said, I am not dissing these other games. Doom, Battlefield 1, Call of Duty, Infinite Warfare, Timefall 2. What do these games all have in common? What they all have in common is that they all have a very realistic art style. And they were designed that way and they played to their own strengths. But you can't deny that after almost a decade of a realistic art style in first person shooters, with a few exceptions here and there, Overwatch just was different. It stood out from the crowd. The reason it was so popular wasn't because everyone was playing it, because everyone's bandwagon. It was popular because Overwatch gave you a reason to play it over other games, and that was that it had different gunplay and different gameplay for every single character you played as. Do I even need to talk about the marketing? Yes, I do. It was amazing to be able to watch these pixel level animations, dragons, Tracer's little origin story. It was more than marketing. It gave you context to these characters, what they're dealing with, what their relationship is to other people. But most importantly, these animations made the world feel even more alive. Let's take dragons, for example. This took place in Hanamura. Something that I love is that the effects of this animation are still there in the actual map, as you can see with some arrows here and there, some slashes here and there. Discovering that on my own just made me appreciate the game even more. I remember Overwatch for the amazing gameplay experience that it offered me that many other games couldn't give me. It felt so good to practice a hero for months, uh, say Genji or a Widowmaker, and finally get them down. Finally get your first play of the game, which is another thing that felt so unique. I can't think of any other game that did this before Overwatch, before other companies started doing it too. The play of the game, it highlighted one player's immense skill. If they were an enemy, you just felt like an idiot, you, you just felt like an asshole. But if it was you on that screen, you felt special, you felt dignified. Like, yeah, I did that, look at me. The highlight intros, giving so much charm to these characters, even more charm. They didn't just stand there. Well, no, they uh, they, did, they did stand there if uh, you had the hero, but that's irrelevant. Also in an era before emotes were everywhere, Overwatch's emotes weren't just a stock animation, played out for everyone. All of these characters do, and still do, have their own unique animations for their emotes. Playing around with your hat, doing a bit of meditation, even the way every character sits was radically different to show that character's person and that's kind of what this game comes down to, and what I liked about it so much. Every character was oozing with personality, every hero just had something different to them. Everything they said, everything that came out of their mouths, yeah you had good guys, you had bad guys, but everyone felt individual. Oh, um, and did I mention that gameplay was amazing? Seriously, I can't stress enough how fun this game was. It is, even to me, so, still really really enjoyable, because I, I don't think Overwatch was good and then just became bad for years, because that's just not true. Unless you played one specific character and you hated what they did to them, you would be completely justified in, you know, not liking the game after that. Though like I said, most, if not most, of the footage you're seeing has been recorded in the past year. And, I don't know, I'm still enjoying myself. Oh, well, well, was. I guess. Especially when everyone around is Reinhardt, jumping up and climbing on the walls and diving on people as Genji with your swords and shurikens. I mean, even the support characters were so fun to play. Lucio let you bounce around the whole map, going so fast. But despite being such a fun character that you could do quite a long win just from his guns, you were still able to be a really good asset to the team, simply by being next to them. Oh, and I totally forgot that this game used to have an attack and defense category for damage characters. It's really weird looking back and stuff like that, such as Hog 1.0. Hog 1.0, scatter arrows, armor packs, full res. You know, the funny thing is, I was really happy that I didn't have to deal with certain things I hate anymore. But the thing is, eliminate Eliminating playstyles like they did in the case of Mercy is kind of what led to the downfall of the game. A lot of the game really should have just been left untouched and 
it's either that, or the game should have just made everyone slightly more broken to compensate. Instead, they went the route of make people feel bad, change heroes' entire kits, kits that people had spent hours and hours perfecting and learning. That just isn't feasible for a game like this, and you can bet that they're gonna keep doing it in Overwatch 2. I play comp one day. I stopped playing comp at about five minutes after. I distinctly remember that. In the first game that I played, I just left mid game. I hated it. I just did not find it fun. I thought it was difficult. Everyone was so good at the game and people were just shouting at me in game chat. It sucked. But you know what? Despite the pain, despite the anger, I went in the golden gun so bad that I joined the PlayStation community and tried to get people with me to play. While I still played quick play to death, I think a pair of is what brought me to love the game as much as I do today. It's just sitting in a team of six people, you know, making plays together, discussing, strategizing, trying to get to a victory in really dire situations with what you have was just so much fun. It was so intense. My heart was always beating at these moments where everyone would just be yelling at each other, you know, being stuck on a contested payload for minutes, but one person does an ult and that ult wins us the game and we would come out on top. It would be so much, just so much chaos going on in one fight. It's, it's moments like these that I still remember about the game. It's moments like these that I still remember Overwatch 1 for, even if they happened less and less as time went on. The way the game was built was just so addictive, it was so unique, that I just didn't really want to play very much else. I tried playing other games, I loved other games, but Overwatch was what I came back to always. To me, Overwatch as a multiplayer experience at the peak of its fun, for me, it was just unmatched. I would just be playing Call of Duty and then I would think to myself, and I could be shooting arrows as Hanzo right now, oh man. I could be Zenyatta right now, I could be shooting balls at people, healing them. Man, I could be smashing people around as Reinhardt and defending a choke. It just had that effect on me. But like every good thing, there has to be some kind of negative, and Overwatch's negatives really started to show themselves as the game got older and older. Seriously, it's just strange how the game kind of just got worse as time went on, and then got better. There would be so many times when characters would just be unbalanced. Some heroes would just be overtuned. I specifically remember times when Torbjorn would just be able to do too much. Moments where I'm just sitting around as a tank and then I immediately die and I think, yep, the scatter arrow got me. Moments where I'm playing with friends in a competitive game, we win the whole team fight and then full res comes in and completely reverses everything we just did. It didn't feel good to have to deal with stuff like that, so I understand why these characters were reworked the way they were. You hear us coming out broken for most of the time. Even if they weren't broken, they were a mess to figure out for months. And considering these heroes would come out every three months, it was pretty often that I would play the game and think, oh Christ, I hate this. How am I supposed to fight this? Well, what am I supposed to do? Overwatch had too many of these moments. You know when Junkrat got his second mine is a moment where I absolutely just hate playing the game. And it's funny, because thinking about it now, he's not even really that overpowered with the second mine. He didn't really get that much tweaks, but back then, Overwatch constantly did things like that to its characters. They constantly gave characters certain things and took away certain things and made a certain ability stronger, made a certain thing stronger. It just wasn't consistent. And tweaking these little things just made playing the game kind of a nightmare at some points. Who the hell remembers Bastion? <coughs> Who the hell remembers Bastion 2.0? Jesus Christ. For at least a solid month, Bastion was the only thing you would see in competitive. Around March 2017, I think. I don't think any character balance was nearly as bad as when Sweden came to the game. Bridget. Bridget was a disaster for the game. She really, she made it close encounters completely horrible. She was way too survivable compared to everyone else. She out DPSed most of the DPS. And she obviously gave in to what we all know as GOATS. Bridget basically ruined the game for a lot of people. It's true that other factors lend to this. There's a lot of other factors that lend to this, but I'm gonna try and not go into too many factors at the moment as that, that, that's like a five hour video in its own, but yeah. I'm just gonna try and zero in on some of it. Besides Bridget being just awful, yeah. 
double shield. Oh god, double shield. Uh, double shield wasn't actually the, even that bad of an uh, issue, was it? Uh, first. Naturally, because there were really only two shield characters at the beginning, it only really started being an issue around the time Orisa came into the fray. Because that was when it went from two to three shield characters. The lucky thing is, it didn't really happen that much because Orisa kind of sucked for a while. It's just that eventually she got stronger and stronger, her shield got better and better, and when that was bubbling until Sigma came out, which was yet another shield character who... I'm having a hard time remembering how much health his shield had, but jeez, I, I remember it being quite a lot. I remember it being like a thousand, twelve hundred. It was just, it was absurd. And so many people were doing Reinhardt and Sigma back then. I really do remember a, a phase of the game, a phase of my time playing the game, uh, just being shooting shields, just shield shooting the game. It was not any worse than it was in 2CP. Th that was when it was at its absolute worst. It just it sucked. You would just be trying to play the game and you would just be greeted with an hour of shield shooting. It just, it, it wasn't fun for DPS at all. DPS sucked when you had to do that. It, it wasn't even really that fun for tanks. You, you pretty much had to resort to characters like Junkrat, Reaper, a very high damaging shield busters, or characters that could shoot through a shield. Uh, Hitscan was pretty much just a contest and who can uh, hit walls really good. I won, but you know, it wasn't really that fun. What else? Uh, oh, I hated Moira. That's, I'm not even gonna really go into too much into that, but I, I hated Moira. She was much stronger um, in the first month that she came out than she is now. They really balanced her well into being a legitimately powerful hero that can do some damage. But Christ, her, her, her grasp was strong. She could just get out of any situation, and this was before she could climb cliffs with it. But oh, I, I hated her. She was not fun to fight, especially as a Genji main. This is gonna sound dumb, but for a time it truly felt like they were trying to extinguish Genji for some reason. You know, Tomb Fist, Moira, and Bridget came out one after another, and they all counter Genji. Even now, they counter Genji, but they countered Genji hard before. He pretty much wasn't viable for years and years. And oh, and speaking of the bad times, Overwatch League. Just Overwatch League. I don't, I don't know where to begin with. Overwatch League inherently wasn't a bad idea. No, actually, screw that. It was a bad idea. It was inherently a bad idea. Overwatch did not need this huge esports league that was incredibly fast just calling it that anyway just pushing it so hard into the game into its life yeah no pretty much ever since they started balancing the game for the very very good competitive players that's kind of the moment where the game just started imploding it was just i'm not gonna i'm not gonna retread over what i said before which was essentially that Overwatch would just screw with characters all the time, but that's essentially part of it. Overwatch League was not good for the game in any sense, and honestly, from the casual perspective, it just got worse and worse. Hell, the game went from caring to the casual perspective for people who like FPS games but don't really want to deal with having to have amazing game. You're being able to rely on other mechanics. It's just funny that they completely turned around on that. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, I think Overwatch's method of balancing the game really just made it harder and harder for people, unlike me, who focus on ability timers, hero positioning, what to do against who, ultimate usage, you know. And as much as I loved competitive, I can't help but see the irony in the game mode that motivated me to completely want to play the game all the time, to want to get better, want to rise up. And the outside looking game being the reason the game deteriorated so much anyway, being the reason the game's player base just deteriorated to the point that it just couldn't keep that high. It just wasn't able to stay in that peak and that's primarily because of this competitive nature that they forced into the game. Anyone remember Roloch? I cannot remember the amount of times I've seen people say they stopped playing the game when they introduced Roloch. All of these things happened in just a few short years, from 2016 to 2019. I think the day they announced that game, Overwatch 2, I just felt so bewildered. I felt so confused. I could not understand why the hell they would do this. It made no sense. Uh, at the time, the game totally felt like it had more than a few years left in its life. The way they were talking about the game in those first few years was as if it's gonna coexist alongside Overwatch 2. Overwatch 1 and 2 players will be playing on the same maps. What maps? 
You didn't make any besides Deathmatch uh, for like uh, three years. Which, oh, uh, that content drought from 2019 to 2022, uh, now. Jesus, uh, so it was awful. Uh, you just had nothing to do in the game for most of the time. Yeah, there were events. Yeah, they still maintained the game. Yeah, they still made some content, but nothing substantial. Echo was released in 2020. I stopped playing the game for a straight year until uh, the beta came out around April. That's when I started playing the game again. To me, this announcement, this game, Overwatch 2, that was the true downfall of the franchise, in my eyes. Uh, did I make you sad? Ugh, I, I didn't mean it. Ah, oh, screw it. Let's think about events for a little bit. Ah, uh, events. Ah, oh, I loved those. It just felt so special. Celebrating the Summer Olympics, doing the Chinese New Year, in such a fashion that the main menu changes. Every character's just dressed up in these traditional outfits that, you know, correct to the event. It was just, it just, it was really special. It did a lot to make me want to keep playing the game. It's just introducing like a new mode, you know, capture the flag in the first show. Chinese New Year, maze snowball fight, uh, whatever the hell it was called, Lucio Ball. It was just so memorable and it just felt like all this ever that they really didn't need to put in. It felt like they were making these events because uh, they, they just wanted to. They just really enjoyed it. Oh, you know, it just came into my mind. Um, you know, late 2016, I gave the game to my friend for borrow. He just had it for like a week. Anyway, I, I wasn't really kept up with the game at all back then. I, I didn't know what new skins they were gonna add, what new content they were gonna add, uh, at least until later on when I started paying attention to that stuff. I didn't know any of that. So you know, to me, logging into the game, but getting it back from my friend and opening it up to see this little Christmas event, it's just a nice little warm moment. I just really did not expect to see this nice little menu with all the characters dressed up in like Christmas gear and a snowy, I guess, thing. I, I just felt so comfortable playing the game. You know, as someone who doesn't celebrate Christmas, it it, 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 touched, it touched a place in my heart. Events just felt like this truly special thing. It They felt like events because they put so much effort that they really didn't need to into these events. At least in the first few years, they really could have just, it felt like a true reason to come back into the game. And that's the kind of thing that the game solely lacked from 2019 to 2022. I don't know. I don't know what point I'm trying to make here. I just loved events. They were really a great reason to get onto the game. Oh, and the anniversary events, uh, giving everyone their own unique dance. I loved that. I loved that so much. They just never stopped an opportunity to give a character even more personality, to build those relationships, whether it was a new voice line, when a new character came in, or a skin. Through all that they did, for this game. All of the bad things, all the good things. I, I still played games most days. I still enjoyed myself even when no one was playing with me. It's just until, you know, very recently, after seeing where the game is headed, and that's what I kind of noticed that I don't really care what happens to the game's future in anymore. I, I, I just cared less and less. Yeah, the future. Overwatch 2. Listen, I'm not trying to say the game is bad. I'm not trying to shit on the game. And if you truly like the gameplay, that's fine. I I understand that people all have different preferences when it comes to this kind of stuff. But but for me, 5v5 is just worse than 6v6. I like tank synergy. I love the feeling of being an off tank and helping your tank fight other people. It just feels so much more empty whether you have two less players. You know, a tank is there to make space. When you have two less people making space, that naturally leads to less chaos and a less feeling of, well, chaos. Which, like I said before, is kind of what I loved about the game. I had to mention how taking away two tanks is easier for snipers. Less appeal for support and even though the game was fun to me through all of those years, the sheer fact that they're gonna delete this experience, this game, Game, it just shows to me that they really don't care. Whoever the hell is in charge of Overwatch does not care. And that really, that makes me not want to care. That makes me so much less excited for the admittedly really, really great maps, really new maps coming. Game. Have that over the fact that the character designs just aren't really that thrilling. Eh. That's all I can really feel when I think about Overwatch 2. Eh. It's an unfortunate future. I don't want to play 5v5. I want to play 6v6. Oh, and there's also this little video that I made, which uh, th th there's a there's a really there's there's a weird feeling in me that that's that's something I made so recently, just five months, uh, almost five months ago. But the thing is, I disagree with this um, a lot. 
Uh, after thinking about it for some months, this was my first time playing the game, um, playing Overwatch 2, uh, after a whole year of not playing Overwatch 1. Um, the thing is, those feelings that I had that I was displaying in that video, those were genuine. I truly did feel that way about Overwatch 2 at the time. The second day, I was nearly as fun, as at that point, I had been playing Overwatch 1 for a few months. I got used to the feeling of the game again, and I just did not enjoy the second bit even half as much. In fact, that's when I started hating the game. That's when 5v5's bad factors just started to feel so much more apparent. I don't know if it was Junker Queen or something they changed, but something about it. No matter how much I tried playing the second beta, it just wasn't fun to me. That gameplay in July, it just somehow felt like it, 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 it aggressively de-evolved. And of course, by then it was confirmed that Overwatch 1 would be deleted. All I did was cement my iffy feelings about it all. I mean, what else they're doing? They're eliminating playstyles that they're probably gonna change over and over again in Overwatch 2. Orisa, Doomfist, Bastion. I'm like, yeah, I understand why you're making these changes. But the thing is, you're forcing these changes because you're not letting people play the old versions. Because you're delaying Overwatch 1. Establishing character playstyles and then changing them completely. You can bet they're gonna keep doing this over and over, and it's just one of those things that shows to me that Overwatch 2 is not a game for people who are returning, or even necessarily for the current fan base. But it's so clearly chasing money, chasing trends, and chasing a blue ocean with the free-to-play model. It's so obvious just looking from far away. It's obvious from a mile away what their plan is. Who are they making this game for? Making it so the game is less reliant on strategy. Do I even need to explain why that's a dumb idea? For Overwatch, the team-oriented game? Ugh, and you know what? Even if the gameplay was how it was, I could probably accept that I, it would suck. Then there's the monetization, and it's just how, how downgraded this is versus, you know, what we had before. Even if this was just cosmetics in this little battle pass. Battle pass. I love battle passes. Even if it was just cosmetics, it would still be worse than what we currently have. I could probably get over cosmetics being locked to this battle pass and having to have this little FOMO factor all over again. I could accept it. You know what I can't accept? Making it so you can't access heroes unless you play the battle pass. Great. One of the things about Overwatch was that both teams are on a level playing field. By making it so you can play competitive matches without all of the heroes, it inherently puts you at a disadvantage. And yeah, for now, they're giving Kiriko to people who own Overwatch 1. That's great. You know what's not great? Two years down the line when people won't have most of these heroes. Look, the, the system Overwatch had in place before for getting cosmetics was relatively simple. Yeah, loot boxes weren't good. I'm not defending those, but they were better than whatever the hell this is. You know, when you combine those factors, when you think about all of that stuff, there's just an immense feeling of, of disgust. And I think about that, when I think about how, because of these things, they're not gonna let you play the first game with all its little quirks, its UI, its gameplay, because they're so obviously aware that there's a sizable part of the player base that would outright prefer one over two. If you wanted to play Overwatch, why would you give in to this horrible monetization? Why would you do all of this? Why would you play? Play a game that is trying to rob you. A game that wants you to treat it like a job, just so you can stand a chance and compare. Well, you don't get the choice. You have to do that. Now, at least for now, Overwatch is pretty much dead. Overwatch 1, that is. All of this did the opposite of excite me for a new game. All it did was make me think about how this game that I love is going away forever, and that they don't care enough to keep it preserved. One of my fondest memories of Overwatch was actually coming home, getting on with my friends, and yeah, just talking about the new hero, uh, just thinking about, oh, what, what are they gonna be like? It was so fun, not just to talk about it, but when the hero would launch, it was so fun to just get on together and play the hero in no limits, or, you know, <laughs> get into a group, and then you get in, and then all of you just try and lock the hero as quick as you can. That whole experience, uh, that's, that, that's just gone. You won't be able to do that anymore. By locking gameplay elements behind a paywall, which yes, it is a paywall. If paying money makes it easier for you to get the hero, then yes, it is a paywall. Don't try and argue, it's, oh, it's in the free pass. You can get it if you play the game enough, if you earn it. That doesn't mean it's not in a paywall. And if they're gonna keep putting heroes in the middle of the battle pass, then 
I honestly, th I think it's safe to say that the soul of Overwatch is gone. For example, with how many people have left Blizzard for the past few years, I don't doubt that there are people working on Overwatch that love what they do. You cannot tell me that I'm supposed to think that this game is still alive with soul. While it puts one of the biggest reasons to play Overwatch behind a paywall, even when they announced before that Heroes would never be behind a paywall, it made a very big deal of saying that they think how important it is that, pre that Heroes shouldn't be in a paywall. It's, it, yeah, it was really important. Clearly. Will Overwatch 1 come back as Overwatch Classic? Maybe. Personally, I don't think it will. I think it would be a real Blizzard move to basically delete the game and make such a big deal about never being able to play it again for them to just target the people who loved playing the game back in 2016, which trust me, there is a big amount of people who would love to play an Overwatch Classic, who loved the game before they riddled it with all of these problems, with all of these balance updates. The thing is, I don't know how they would do that. Overwatch was one of those games that had updates constantly, you know? Would it be yearly versions? Like Overwatch Classic 2016. But if they were doing that, what part of the year would they be taking their versions on? I don't think it really would work with Overwatch. It worked with World of Warcraft. I don't know how that game works, but it worked with that game. I really don't think it would work with Overwatch Classic. Eh, I mean, with Overwatch 2, I guess there's a few things I won't miss from Overwatch 1. One of them being 2CP, without a doubt. A 2CP sucked. The draining feeling of knowing I'm playing Hanamura or Temple of Anubis, unmatched. It was always so disappointing, especially if you were playing tank support. Kind of manageable if you were playing DPS. Tank support, it sucked. I am not going to miss 2CP. I, it's weird, but I really do think that the 5v5 format would actually work with 2CP as opposed to everything else. Yeah, I'm glad it's gone. That's one of the few changes of Overwatch 2 I can, you know, actually agree with. Plus crowd control, I guess, you yeah. know. That's not too bad of a decision, really. I think lots of people do not like being stunned constantly. Even if I think it's kind of necessary uh, for a game like Overwatch, and that a time's probably gonna come and they're gonna have to bring it back, and the same issues are gonna come back, I think it's a good decision. Be a bit less about interrupting you constantly, even if I hate what they've done to Sombra. I wanna wrap this up by saying I, I, I truly, well and truly loved my time on the game. I spent over 2,000 hours playing Overwatch. I truly do not regret anything from all the time that I spent playing the game. I made actual friendships from the game. You know, people that I still talk to today, well, I don't think I'm gonna play Overwatch 2. I don't know how much I'll play that if I play at all. There is just no regret that I had for all of the time that I spent playing Overwatch. Overwatch 1 gave me some of my best gaming experiences, period. So, I hate to say goodbye to Overwatch 1, uh, but this, uh, this whole little era we had, it really was fun while it lasted. <sighs> now that my Overwatch is gone, I guess I'm gonna have to play other games. You know, something else. I'm gonna have to find something else to fill this hole in. Ugh. You know, maybe I'll uh, get into uh, Fortnite, which has a battle pass. Yeah, I don't, I don't need, no. Maybe, maybe I'll play a uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, Rainbow Six Siege, which uh, has has a battle pass. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I heard about this game. Uh, Valorant, right? Yeah, that's what it's called, Valorant. I'm thinking I'm giving that a shot. Val Val Valorant has a battle pass too. Maybe I'll just stop using the internet.